Good morning, Sunday School class. Today is January 10, 2021, week six of our Sunday School lesson. Our subject is called to significance. What is our study about today? People seeking meaning and purpose in life. Wanting to be a part of something significant, Jesus calls Simon and his cohorts to follow him to find fulfillment in doing the work of God's kingdom. So our Bible passage today will be coming from Luke 5, 1 through 11. The topics that will be discussed is God's calling, God's power, miracles, and sacrifice. Okay, so now for our Bible background, Jesus came to bring us abundance, full life, to bring us abundant, full life. His purpose was not just to prepare us for heaven, he came to give our days on this earth purpose and significance. In today's story, Jesus used a miracle, I'm sorry, Jesus used a miraculous catch of fish to call his first disciples from existence to true living. He introduced them to the power of purpose of the kingdom of God and proved to them that life with Christ can make the impossible happen. These men did not hesitate. They left everything behind to follow the master's call. Their future fishing endeavors would have <clears throat> eternal consequences. The work of God's kingdom brings significance and fulfillments to our lives. Okay, so there we have it. Um, for uh, Bible background and uh, the stage is set, okay? Where Jesus used a miracle to help recruit the disciples, okay? Um, as we get started, we'll go ahead and we'll be reading from the NIV. Uh, Luke 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, entitled, By the Lake. It says, one day... As Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listened to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, uh, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Okay, so the passage has been titled differently uh, depending on what Bible translation you're using. It says some of the focus on the calling of the disciples, and the other some focus on the calling of the disciples, and others focus on the miracle Jesus performed with the great catch of fish. Both are significant. Verse one gives the setting. It's important for us to understand both the writer and the initial audience to whom he was writing. Luke was a physician, right? And took great effort to pay attention to details as he described this major event in the Gentile, to the Gentile reader, Theophilus. Uh, see Luke 1, 1 through 4. The story opens when Jesus asks, when Je the story opens with Jesus as the central character standing by the lake of Jesus and teaching the word of God to the crowd. This body of water was also known as the Sea of Galilee. See Mark 4 and 18. The lake is located in northeastern Israel and is fed by the Jordan River. Jesus got into Simon's boat, asking Simon to participate in his ministry event by pushing from the shore, and he taught from there. The boat was not being used at this point because the fishermen had completed their work for the day. Jesus may have been using the effect of, of the sound being amplified over the water as a sort of microphone so that the people could hear 
what he uh, was teaching or being in the boat a little from the shore may have given him better space to adequately address the crowd. It is not by chance or coincidence that Jesus chose Simon's boat to be used as his pulpit in the water. Though prayer and communication, with, through prayer and communication with the Father, Jesus knew God's will in each area of his ministry. Okay, so basically what this is telling us is um, even though it kind of seemed like it was a coincidence that Jesus chose Peter and his boat, it really wasn't. Um, even though it seemed like, um, well, it says Simon, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, even though he chose Simon, you know, uh, it was predestined. You know, this is this was in God's plan the whole time. And because Jesus had prayed and meditated and communicated with God so much, he knew what the Father's will was. And so um, uh, Simon had just been fishing all day and uh, he was finished for fishing. They said that he was, um, you know, on the shore cleaning his nets, basically ready to go home and just take it easy. And when Jesus asked him to get back in the boat, take him out, push away from the shore a little bit so he can finish teaching. Simon gave him no grief, gave him no back talk. He just did it. So that's a lesson to us. Even though sometimes we're tired, you know, a lot of times when we get out for work, we don't want to be bothered with nothing. Look, I just got out for work. Leave me alone, right? Well, Simon gives us a great example here of no matter what you're doing, no matter what you've been doing, no matter what you think you're going to do, when God calls, you need to listen. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, verse four and five. Okay. It says, uh, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you said so, I will let down the nets. When they did, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets uh, began to break. So that, so they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Now that's something, okay? Um, Simon was very obedient. Uh, when God told him, when Jesus told him to push out, he did. And uh, after he heard him teach, then he says, okay, now let your nets down. Basically, okay, now let's catch some fish. And see, this is what's interesting. Jesus knew that he already knew they had been out all night and didn't catch anything. You know, didn't really bring that out in the lesson, but uh, he knew that. And so uh, he said, well, because you were obedient, right? Remember, God always blesses obedience, okay? Because Simon was obedient and, and went back out on the boat, even though he had just got off of work, right? Went back out on the boat, allowed Jesus to use his boat as a pulpit, right? Then Jesus blessed him. Blessed him better than he'd ever been blessed in his life. Look at this. He turned around and said, put the nest down. He put the nest down. Well, first he said, he said, master, you know, in other words, no disrespect. But man, we've been fishing all night. Uh, we, we had our nest right here all night long. Didn't catch nothing. But because you asked, <laughs> not my will, but your will be done, right? Because you asked, we're going to do it anyway. And they did. And obedience paid off. Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? So they put their nets down and they caught so many fish, they couldn't believe it. They're like, are you kidding me? And they said they had to call their partners. They had to call people with another boat. Hey, come on over here with your boat, man. We got more fish than we can handle. We want to share it with you. Come on. They got their nets got the other boat filled up. Now, I've never heard of a boat 
sinking or, or, or beginning to sink because they had too many fish in it. Now, I know uh, a couple of our brothers like to fish. Uh, Brother Wilson, I know he likes to fish. I think Brother Hagen does as well, and Pastor and several other folks, uh, Mike and so forth. Uh, probably everybody, all the brothers, but me, I used to fish, but not so much anymore. But anyway, have you ever heard of people catching so many fish? See, understand something. Most fish don't weigh that much. You know, not, not the fish that we normally eat. I mean, the big whales and all that type of thing. That ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about fish, right? They really don't weigh but a couple of pounds or so for the most part. They had so many fish that it was sinking both boats, two boats, right? When they filled it up. Now, here on the boat, you probably have a half dozen, two, three dozen men on there, 100, two, 300 pounds or whatever. It ain't sinking with them. But now it's going to sink with all these fish. See, God can bless you more than you can think or imagine. Who would think or, or imagine that you can have that much fish in a boat? I can't begin to guess how many pounds that would have to be for them boats to sink like that. But Jesus showed them this miracle. And in my opinion, it just blew them out the water, if I can use that expression. Okay. So, uh, so let's move on. Okay, verse uh, 8 through 11. It says, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so when James and John, the son of Zebedee, uh, Simon's partners, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Now, you talk about something special. Okay. Peter realized he was in the presence of greatness. He heard him teaching. Right. A lot of times you hear people teach. OK, yeah, that sounds good. And then he saw. He saw the man of God in action. OK, see, Peter's Simon's um, livelihood, his profession was a fisher. That's what he did for a living. He knew how to fish. Jesus was a carpenter, was well, son of a carpenter. Right. And uh, prior to this time. I don't believe we've ever heard of Jesus doing any kind of fishing, right? At least he wasn't known for being a fisherman, other than a fisherman of men, but not fisherman of fish. Um, but yet, Simon listened to him. Simon obeyed him. And from doing so, he was blessed. Blessed so much as scared him. He was like, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Get, get away. I don't deserve to be in your presence. I am a sinner, right? And you have to be a man of God. Number one, that teaching that you did, you knew what you're talking about. Now, to see this miracle, never happened. Who's seen this before, right? Just blew them away. So um, it was just amazing. And Jesus said, look, Simon, don't be aside. Don't be uh, astonished. You know, uh, don't look. From now on, you're going to fish for people. Uh, you're going to fish for men. OK. And so um, Jesus put on such a great miracle for him. He was sold. You know, he, hey, look. What happened? Simon fell on his knee. He was at the altar right there. Boom. See, you don't have to go to church to get saved. Amen, somebody. Simon got saved right there on the boat in the middle of, of the sea. Okay. Why? Because he heard the word. He understood it. And then he saw Jesus uh, perform the miracle. I'm in. All right. And so uh, after that, he was willing to leave everything and follow Christ. 
Are we willing to live everything to follow Christ? If Christ was to call us now and say, leave your family, leave your job, leave your house, follow me. I must say, um, I think there'd be some debating going on. Well, Lord, are you sure you want me? Okay, well, Lord, okay, if I follow you, how long will I have to go? Because you know I got my wife and kids here. Right. And now I'm a, I'm a grandparent, you know, and, and I don't want to leave my grandkids. You know, they, they do you think God doesn't know all these things already? Do you think he's not fully aware of what our situation is? He knew our situation before we knew our situation. Amen. All right. So anyway, that's our lesson for today. Uh, fishing for people. So the thing that I ask you, are you a fisher of people, a fisherman of, of people? Do you fish for people or do you fish for fish? <laughs> it's not a sin to fish for both. But um, God is calling us, and, and we know that uh, this past week we saw some incredible things, you know, some, some things that I don't think anybody thought we would ever see in this country, you know. And rather than to hate, rather than to wish for the worst for these individuals, let's pray for them. Let's forgive them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, that's not easy. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say, you know, hey, police, we're not asking that you shoot them like you shoot us, but next time, don't shoot us like you didn't shoot them, right? So, what that does is shows compassion for those individuals, okay? We need to show compassion. Go past just not shooting them, but Father, forgive them, right? So God bless you. We love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson on today, and uh, may God bless you all. Amen.